It's another Maker Monday, where we put the smart into smart home one episode at a time. And I'm here with Bjorn this week. Mm. Hi, Sean. Hi. And in this episode, we're going to be setting up our Sonoff. In a previous episode, we flashed it and we installed Tasmodo software on there. Uh, if you haven't seen that episode, I recommend that you go back and watch it before we do this one. Uh, in this one, we're going to... Why don't you tell us what we're going to do, Bjorn? Um, yeah, first of all, we are configuring the Sonoff um, to use MQTT. MQTT is a communication protocol where all these IoT devices communicate with your home assistant. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, we're configuring it on Home Assistant, and then we're having a little, little bit fun with it. Oh, a so. little bit of fun. Let's go! So, Bjorn, what's the first thing we do? Okay, um, first of all, uh, we need to uh, configure uh, the Sonoff device. Mm -hmm. So, um, it give it the correct MQTT parameters. So, for that, um, we're here on the Sonoff page. Mm -hmm. um, IP is usually it's easy to get it from your from your from your router or something like this if you don't know it. Or watch the last episodes there. We uh, watch the last episodes. Okay. And um, so it's a, it's got a funny web interface here, and it's got a configuration tab here. And then you just need to click on configure MQTT. So and it asks for a host. So that's your home assistant. Mm -hmm. So uh, in our case, um, it will be different. In your case, it's uh, this IP address, um, usually something different on your home network. Mm. Uh, port is OK. And then we need a user. And this is, um, I guess it was something like MQTT user. I guess Burn configured it. Right, Ben. Some, some episodes ago, yeah. and uh, and he told you to use a better user and a better password, but no, we didn't change it. So uh, actually, I'm just entering the password mm -hmm. that uh, has been given, and um, topic is okay for for our case. Um, that's actually the name of the device, and you can change that, uh, but that's not so important at the moment. So, um, yeah, let's save it. Yeah. Device will restart. All right. All right. So we're going to give it a reboot. Mm -hmm. How long does the reboot take? Let's see. Oh, 30 seconds or something like this. So we need to make awkward conversation now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, we can just check, uh, check if it's back online. Yeah. So, yeah, that was it. It's there already? Yeah, it's there already. Yeah. And uh, one thing you will see, uh, the Sonoff device blinked a lot all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now it stopped blinking because it's now ready. Okay. Uh, first of all, I just want to show you, okay, there's something still missing. That was the MQTT configuration. And now you can see it's not blinking anymore. Mm -hmm. Means uh, everything is correct. It's ready to yeah, go. So it's ready to go. Okay. Okay. So and we can just press a button here on the web interface. Oh, oh. Perfect. That was not yet MQTT. No. It was just the Sonoff. Sonoff device, yes. Mm. Next step is to set up Home Assistant. Yeah. So we just need to make uh, the son of aware to Home Assistant and we need to do a little bit of configuration here. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm already logged in okay. into our Home Assistant uh, using SSH. And um, the usual path here, home home assistant dot home assistant, uh, there's a configuration YAML. If you watched the last episodes, Bernd, I guess, already tweaked around in that configuration file too. So we will see that. And I already prepared something. So actually, this one here is the standard Home Assistant configuration. Uh, something has, has been already done here, so these were the passwords, which are still not set to the correct value. So Don't hack us. Still insecure, and uh, so please use a different password. Use a different password. And um, here we've got different switches here from the coffee, coffee machine. There was a switch here on, on the GPIO interface, so directly on the Raspberry Pi. And what I added now is the switch Sonoff. Um, Quite simple, um, so it's a switch because you can put it on or off. And uh, platform here is MQTT, so not like this one here. You, you can see it's a Raspberry, mm. Raspberry Pi uh, interface that are the pins here. And here we use MQTT, so um, then we give it a name, Edison Light, because it looks like a... Edison Light. Edison Light. Uh, state topic here, uh, that's quite simple. And uh, we have seen for uh, in, the, in the last uh, minute that we configured uh, the MQTT on the Sonoff with something like uh, Sonoff. The topic was Sonoff. Mm -hmm. 
So that uh, we need to do here too. So if you got two of them, you just rename another one son of two or yeah. give it a more distinctive name. Okay. And uh, here we store that son of. So a stat son of and power, command son of power. That's actually the topic where um, Home Assistant can check if it's on or off. So that's the state if it always is broadcasting. And the command to turn it on or off is this one here. Um, if you gave it another name uh, in the son of configuration interface, just use it here. Uh, QS is not so important here. And the payload is on or off. That's actually uh, the wording you have to send to put it on or off. That's in this case, just, just use it like, like this one here. So you just leave it that way? Uh, yeah, just leave it that way. Retain true is just that it saves the last state. Okay. So that's it. And um, so you just save this one here. Yeah. Okay, didn't save it, just close it, but it was already there. And you need to restart your home assistant service. Uh, you can do that using the web interface uh, or just uh, make a system control restart. And afterwards, um, you can go to your home assistant. So just make a reload here. And what you can see here, uh, you know, the German switch here, Schalter. Uh -huh. <laughs> and what you can see here, there's already the Edison light is already here. Okay. Uh, if you have tweaked around with your UI and have a special UI which, which is not auto generated, this one here is an auto generated UI, mm -hmm. you can still see it here in the States. But here you can see already the coffee machine, the switch 01, and the Edison light. And yeah, there let's, you go. let's try it. Hey, so that's it. Works. Simple nice. as that. Björn, next step. What yeah. is it? Next step. Um, I put back in our uh, IKEA Threadfree light. Mm -hmm. And um, here we've got our son of still. And it would be nice if we somehow can get them in sync because now we've got our Threadfree here and we can turn the light on yeah. and we can turn it off. And let's say you've got your, your, your home and you've got your Threadfree lights on the, on the ceiling or something like this. And you've got another light which is not IKEA thread free, so, right. but you want to have it on or off, yeah. uh, something like aquarium light, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so just let's do that. So um, we still have our son of here. We've put something different in, we'll see later. And now we need to make two automations. So first of all, we need to make Home Assistant uh, turn on the son off when this light goes on. So when okay. the state changes from off to on and vice versa, if this one here goes off, uh, we want to switch this off too. So, okay. And we can do that with home assisted automations. Mm -hmm. And for that, uh, we can just add some configuration. So if we just go into our configuration file, usually a uh, home assistant has another configuration file, which is called automations.yaml.yaml, um, which is for automations only. So we're using this one here. And Burnt already did something in that file. Okay. So I prepared it already. And um, I added two, add two automations here. So the first one, Elias, you can put in something what you want. Disk mm -hmm. one, let's see what this is. Uh, trigger is a platform is state. There are different platforms. You can also use MQTT events and things like that. But um, as this is a state change from off to on or on to off, we just use, uh, use this one here. Entity ID is your our light. This is a thread free bulb E whatever. Um, you can also use the friendly name, so it would be light dot make a Monday light. I okay. guess it was the code. Right. Yeah, so, okay. state change is from off to on. So, if if it goes, if it was off and goes on, uh, the action will be um, a service with a service which is called switch. So, a switch should be turned on, mm -hmm. and the entity. So, which switch? The entity ID is a switch dot Edison light. That's our MQTT uh, switch. Second is. Um, the automation for turning it off. So same again here, uh, state here from on to off. So if it was on and goes off, action is service turn off, as uh, a switch turn off, and uh, switch add is light. Again, the same entity. So all right. Uh, just reload your configuration. Let's see what happens. So this is our light here. Comes on and Comes on and what's happening? The light behind okay. you is coming out. There you go. Cool. So that turned on the sonar, sonar off at the same time. Yeah, that turned off the sonar off at the same time and check if it goes off too. Perfect. Yes, it does. That's it. That's it.
So there's, there's a lot of applications that you can do with that kind of uh, you can turn synchronization. Every, everything. So I mean, you can turn off your stereo or turn on your stereo. So if you just enter the room and want to have your stereo on or something mm -hmm. like this, you can do that. Uh, you can also use different triggers, not only this light. For example, if if the weather outside is bad, just uh, start something. Okay. Or if it's getting dark outside, there are some plugins which are uh, actually giving you weather information if it's dark or something like this, you can use that uh, to such just react to some events and then turn it on or off. Great. Uh, and one more thing before you go, we're giving away some Raspberry Pi B pluses. Uh, we have three of these to give away. And what we need you to do is to comment on the videos and subscribe to our channel. And then we'll randomly select three people to send this to. And that's not all. That's not all. We'll also send you a 3D printed case to put the Raspberry yep. Pi in. We can also, we, we have various colors that we can produce this. Yeah, thing. just choose your color, perhaps we've yeah. got it. So there is a Tesla branded thing for your Raspberry Pi. So comment, subscribe. We'll see you next time for the next episode of Maker Monday. Thanks for watching. Bye.